the all quarterbacks from the 2020 NFL draft class got paid. Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Jordan Love, and Jalen Hurts, Tua Tungavailoa. There's one guy in there that probably didn't deserve the contract he got. I think we mm-hmm. all know who we're talking about. But uh, without who cares about that? Um, I rank these five quarterbacks. I think pretty easily two was the worst of these five. I don't think it's particularly close. Maybe with Jalen Hurts, but I think Jalen Hurts has gotten better f- from within the pocket. And then he has a different dimension with his legs. Number four is Jalen Hurts. I mean, we talk about one-year wonders with Jordan Love and how he got paid. I mean, how is that much different than Jalen Hurts? I mean, they both had excellent years and then got paid from it. I think Jordan Love has more top-end talent than Jalen Hurts. And that's why I have him one spot above in number three. I think Jordan Love just has some natural talent to him that is hard to replicate. And Mm -hmm. I think the talent that Jordan Love possesses is up there with all the top end guys in the league, like Herbert and Josh Allen and Mahomes. Like he's in that category when it comes to just pure arm talent. Uh, number two is Justin Herbert. I'm actually very optimistic about the Chargers this year. I think that everybody is kind of overlooking them because of the wide receiver problem, and that's fair. But they yeah. also forget that Greg Roman has been in different situations with receiver talent that has been similar and still has gotten great offenses, especially on the ground. And if you're asking Justin Herbert to not pass that much, just be efficient when he does, because Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman, last time they were together, they had the 31st. Uh, they were 31st in pass rate, so they didn't pass the ball all that much. If Justin Herbert just gets to be efficient on his passing attempts and they have a great rushing offense, even with the lack of receiving weapons, Herbert will be able to lift that offense up and make the playoffs with that offense. I think so. Uh, I, I don't think he needs, at least right now, all these top-end receivers if they're focusing on just building a great running game around him, which I think is really smart. And then Joe Burrow is number one. And Joe Burrow, there's been there's been this argument between Joe Burrow and Josh Allen recently about who's a bigger threat to Mahomes. And it, it feels like all the analysts side with Josh Allen, Mina Com sides with Josh Allen. And there's no there's no disrespect in that. I think Josh Allen is great, but I also think at the same time, um, it's just popular to underrate Joe Burrow and to not really appreciate what he's done. If any quarterback were to be in his position and they won like he won, everybody would be praising him and really not be looking at the advanced numbers. It's kind of crazy how like EPA only matters for certain players. If it's, if I'm comparing Allen and Joe Burrow, Oh, Allen's EPA is better and this, and this is why Allen's better. But when you do that for Purdy, it's like, okay, but, you know, these stats aren't telling a whole story. I mean, it goes for everything. Just the stats don't tell the whole story with Burrow and Allen either. I mean, mm-hmm. if we look at them just from sometimes, sometimes you only need to look at surface level. You don't need to go too deep into shit to just understand what it is. Like, for example, Tua got all the great advanced numbers, right? But he's one in five against playoff teams last year. That's surface level analysis. I don't have to go too deep to dig into that. Joe Burrow has beaten Mahomes. He's three and one against them. But not only has he beaten Mahomes, he beat fucking Josh Allen. Josh Allen at home, snowy Buffalo. Joe Burrow went on the road and beat his ass and outplayed him. This past season, when Joe Burrow was healthy, when we got a primetime game against the Bills and the Bengals, who the fuck was the better quarterback? Who played better? Joe Burrow outplayed Josh Allen. And the Bengals' defense this past season was one of the worst in the league, and the the Bills were one of the best ones in the league. So Joe Burrow performed better against a better defense than Josh Allen did against a worse defense. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why people try to make it feel like Allen and Burrow are meteors apart when, in reality, they're neck and neck, and Joe Burrow could be number two because at every single turn, Joe Burrow has kicked Josh Allen's ass. Right. Whenever they played, he's beat his ass. It's interesting, though. I, I want to say one thing before we go on. Um, Joe Burrow, I think this year, can throw that out the window, his defense being one of the worst in the football because when he's went on these sustained playoff runs, most notably in 2021, that was one of the best defenses that playoffs. And when Burrow was playing – moderately average he wasn't playing up to a standard he said in that regular season it was that defense going arrowhead and getting the job done 
So I think you can say that both of these two guys have benefited from great defenses. And in many ways, um, I don't think it's been really properly portrayed that that defense has played almost as large of a role in the Bengals' success over the years. This is the thing, though, John. When they came back against the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game in 2021, the score was 21-3. to Mm -hmm. They're not getting to 21 or exceeding that without their offense consistently going down the field and scoring. So even though their defense played a part in it, Joe Burrow came down from 21 to three. I mean, when, when the Texans were up on the chiefs, they were up 24 to zero in the playoffs and Mahomes came back. We didn't say, Oh yeah, Mahomes came back, but his defense is the reason why they did that. We don't say that shit. We say Mahomes did what he had to do in his drives Mm -hmm. is no different than Joe Burrow. Before that in the, in the second, in the divisional round, Joe Burrow beat the Titans being sacked nine times, the most ever in winning in a game. He still threw for 348 yards. Joe Burrow did completed 70% of his passes and beat the Titans. And while he didn't have a touchdown, he directly correlated to their scores because most of their drives were because of what he did passing. And then against the Raiders, he was great in the Super Bowl. I mean, listen, man. In the Super Bowl, Joe Burrow wasn't that good, but he also didn't really have a chance to be that good because their offensive line faced off against Aaron Donald and Von Miller and Leonard Floyd. I mean, they had a group of all pros on their defensive line, and the Bengals' offensive line was one of the worst. Josh Allen has always had a pretty good offensive line. Since Stephon Diggs got there, he's always had pretty good weapons. He's always had a top-10 defense. When we talk about who's had more in the last three years from a – all around roster perspective, it's been the Bills. The Bills have always been favored to make it further, to mm-hmm. win the AFC, to win the Super Bowl. You look at yeah. DVOA stats, they've always had a higher DVOA. They've been people's Super Bowl picks because they've been a complete roster. When mm-hmm. the Bengals made a Super Bowl, they were everybody was caught by surprise. So I can't, I don't understand how we are knocking Joe Burrow for any any little thing that goes right in Burrow's way. It's like, okay, yeah, but he has elite receivers. Oh, yeah, but Josh Allen has an elite fucking defense. Nobody mentioned nothing about that. In this past playoffs, the Bills versus the Chiefs, the Bills defense, for the most part, did their job. Yeah. They did. Josh Allen missed a throw in the end zone that was short. That could have been the that could have been the difference in winning and losing the game, which right. was the difference in losing the game. If I'm not mistaken, Chris Jones was hitting him on that play, too. Right? Yeah, he hit him. He hit him, yeah. But that's, it that's wasn't – but no, but – Josh Allen also, he had the chance to step up in that throw, and he did step up. Right. He did step up, and, and he was there. But it's you say Over Chris Jones hit him. And yeah, I that's, think it's to that read, too. Yeah, and that's fair. Like, Chris Jones did hit him. But, okay, when the Chiefs faced the, the Bengals last time in the AFC Championship game, Chris Jones sacked Joe Burrow on four down instantly, and he, he had no protection. I mean, Joe Burrow had, I think, three backup offensive linemen starting in that game. Mm-hmm. So I just don't understand it. When we talk about Burrow versus Allen, um, I think, you know, we don't have to dive too deep into it. I think the stats back up Burrow a lot. But also, when you just watch the games, anytime Burrow has matched up with Allen, Burrow has outplayed Allen. That's fair. I did my list a little bit differently. And when talking about this quarterback class, it's one of the best of all time because you have five quarterbacks who all just got paid over $150 million dollars. And you look at the top end talent, you've got a couple of different guys who we've seen for a while here. So I have three tiers. I have my third tier, which is Jalen Hurts and Tua. And I look at Tua, for me, why I have him a little bit lower than Hurts is just the health and the uncertain durability. He lost some weight this offseason so that he can move a little bit better in the pocket. But I don't think Jalen Hurts is that much better than Tua, clearly, because Tua is the more productive passer. He's the more productive quarterback overall. And I feel like if he had the same physical build as Hertz and he was staying healthy year to year, I would take him over Jalen. But I think this year we're going to see whether or not he can for a second year in a row for the most part. Number four, I've honestly got Hertz. That's like a four I four B. My second tier is Jordan Love and Justin Herbert. Herbert's got three more years of playing at a high level. But I think what separates Jordan Love and why I'm higher on Love long term is that under pressure, he moves and senses and feels that heat in the pocket and steps up and makes bigger throws down the stretch. 
I look at their comeback win versus the Saints, comeback down 17. He was delivering throws the entire first half. His water series didn't bring them into the second. You look at his games versus the Lions on Thanksgiving, his win versus the Chiefs. The only quarterback this year who scored over 24 versus that Kansas City defense was Jordan Love. You look at a quarterback who was in his first year, he became one of a select few in NFL history to throw for 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. Some people may have some balls, and I agree, because you got a $220 million contract over four years after just one season, after a 10-game stretch. But in that 10-game stretch, you cannot name a quarterback who played better. 16 touchdowns, one interception, led that team with a defense that was routinely setting them up to fail. And I look at Jerome Love's poise in those games, and I think it separates him from Herbert. It's why long term, I think Love is going to be the better quarterback. But for right now, I've got Herbert at two and then Joe Burrow at number one.